step seven, pick training. So we have a fully set up system. We have our autonomous motion module communicating with our UR E-Series controller. We've aligned the 3D sensor. So the 3D sensor is aligned to the robot space. Uh, we've added our end effector, our tool, and we've created clearance shapes around that. We've trained clearance shapes in the environment as well as for the bin, which is a special object in the environment. And we've loaded in a CAD model of our part and we've set our perception settings. So now we're ready to move on to the UR program tree. So we'll go ahead and click program. We're gonna insert a fresh blank program under UR caps pick and place loop. And you can see that it prefills some values, some, some nodes. Uh, it has several sections. So you'll see here that there are pick and place loops, that's the name of the program. Under that there's pick and place rules, a home position, and a find next part. So home position and find next part are the runtime nodes of the program. And it indicates the seven steps in an Actinav pick and place program. So step one, the robot's in the home position. It then moves to pre-pick, pick, post-pick, pre-place, place, post-place. Post and then of course back to home, it all starts over again. So at home, find next part, takes a scan, and then the six steps of motion, and then back to home again. So we're gonna go through the steps for training the pick rules. Under pick and place rules, you can see it automatically populates a single pick and place rule. Of course, we can add more pick and place rules. Typically, uh, a six-sided part, you need at least three pickable surfaces. Of course, for flat parts that have a top and a bottom, you want both sides to be pickable, so you would have two pick and place rules. For cylinders or axisymmetrical parts, sometimes those have just a single pick and place rule. So we'll go through and train to start just one side. To add another pick and place rule, go to pick and place rules and we can add a pick rule and we can add a place rule. For the moment we'll go ahead and suppress those two and we'll go to pick rule. Under pick rule you see there's tabs pre-pick, pick, post-pick, post -pick, and advanced. The first thing we do is train the way we want to pick the part. And this is a scan to teach methodology. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit this teach button and we're going to follow the on-screen instructions. Step one, attach part to the tool. Then we're going to move the robot arm to present the gripped part to the 3D sensor and then we're going to tap scan. So first we're going to attach the part to the tool. To do that, we're going to go to the I.O. tab. In this case, we're using a suction-based end effector. So we're going to turn suction on, and then we're going to physically attach the part. Now the first uh, pick rule that I'm going to train is uh, this side here. This is the left side of the part, let's call it. So I'm going to turn suction on, then going to attach that part, and I want to pick it right here in the middle of the part. So I'm going to figure out how I want to pick it at that point. Step two, it says to move the robot arm uh, to present the gripped part to the 3D sensor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the robot, we're going to physically move it underneath the 3D sensor, such that the 3D sensor is able to see the part and the end effector. We're then going to hit scan. And we've located that part, and we want to relate what we see in the real world to what we see in our environment, our virtual environment on the Teach Pendant. And we can see that we do have that part gripped uh, the way that we've recorded it. So we'll go ahead and hit Done. And that's that. We've just trained uh, that we want to pick this part on the clear side uh, at that point right in the center of the part. Now, there's some adjustments that we can do. We're trying to create an ideal pick. Now, in this case, we want to pick perpendicular into the part. So this value of 88.03, in reality, we want to normalize that to 90 degrees. 
we want a perfectly uh, perpendicular pick. And we can do the same and normalize that as well. The only value we really change, uh, other than normalizing the, uh, the relationship between the end effector and the part, is the z value. So if you find that uh, the end effector is driving hard into your parts, then you're going to want to increase the, uh, the, the z value. If you're finding that it's not quite touching the parts, well then you're going to want to reduce the z value so that you drive the, uh, the end effector more into the parts. Often with suction and multiple bellows, this is a parameter that you're going to want to adjust when we start testing. Other than that, everything looks good. Under pre-pick, the only uh, value that you can adjust other than the speed and acceleration is the pre-pick offset. So that's like an approach point. And the system is going to move in a linear fashion to pick the part, and it's going to retract vertically uh, in space up a certain amount. So that's what post-pick is. Again, we can manually control the speed for that, and we can control the offset. Generally, you want an offset which will uh, pull the part out of the bin or almost out of the bin. So the default value is 250 millimeters. In this case, we'll accept the defaults of 50 millimeter offset for pre-pick and 250 millimeter offset for post-pick. Under advanced, we can find this a very important checkbox, allow tool rotation around its z-axis. So we could train this part to pick exactly this way. But with this checkbox checked, that allows us to consider 360 degrees of picking around that point. So it just increases with a single pick rule the amount of ways that we can pick that part. So now we've trained the pick rule. The only thing left to do is to associate it with a place rule. So pick rule zero, I'm going to go ahead and rename clear side or left side. We'll call it left side in this case. And I'll associate that associated place rule with what's currently named place rule zero. So that's what we need to do in order to teach uh, pick rule. Now, we also want to set our home position, which is simply a robot pose. So we'll pick a pose, which is out of the field of view of the scanner, but relatively close by. That looks good. And we'll go ahead and click Set Position. It takes us to the Move page, and we're now in that position. So the home position is now set. The next thing we need to do is train the place rule. 